Charterman, Charterman, Brian. Charterman, 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 Brian. Greedy comics, toys are hella sick. Hell whacking it. Take a bad hit. Take a bad hit. What's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Hot Toys figure review on the Avengers Movie Mark 7 Iron Man 1 6 scale collectible figure. I have to give a huge thanks to Javon for making this happen. Thank you so much, man. He sold me this figure for dirt cheap, so much so I'm just calling it a birthday gift, man. I'm very, very pleased to have this. If you want to show some love, follow him on Instagram. The link is below. And I am just so pleased to finally have this figure. I've been wanting it for years. Anyway, uh, looking right over here, you can see we get some really nice packaging of the Mark 7, and you can see this kind of foil look right there with the Avengers. You get the same foil look right there with his arc reactor. Then on the back there's not much going on. You just get this nice fade and then you get the arc reactor again. On the top and bottom it says Iron Man like that and get this gold packaging. And yeah you can see I've already taken the figure out of the packaging of course. I did not hesitate. And then on the back over here you can see all the people responsible for making the figure. Alright let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Mark 7 Iron Man out of the packaging. I absolutely love this figure. This is the first time I've really gotten a chance to play around with it and mess with all the accessories. So many parts to this thing and I love that he's shooting weapons from his shoulders, from his forearms, his wrists, the repulsors, the thighs, the back has these panels and everything. I just absolutely love this thing. Alright, so like I said, there's a lot of accessories that come with this guy. Let's take a closer look at those and then we'll take a closer look at Iron Man. So with this figure in particular, I strongly recommend reading through all of the directions before messing with the figure. You do not want to break anything. And the figure comes with your standard Hot Toys adjustable cradle over here, which I'm still not a big fan of, but you can shift that up and down, and then you can see it says Avengers right there, and then it says Mark 7. And then the figure comes with this ridiculous amount of interchangeable parts, which is just too awesome. So you basically get three different display options for this figure in all kinds of places on this guy. Uh, for instance, you get three different head options right over there. You have a battle damaged face mask, and then the regular face mask, and then you get the Robert Downey Jr. head, along with the collar piece that you use over there. And we also get three different options for the chest area. You get the battle damage and then you get the regular chest plate and then you can remove the chest plate. Three different options right there for the shoulders and then these little pieces right here is kind of like the bare one right there. Uh, you get these interchangeable arms, you get these missiles, you get three different sets of interchangeable hands, you get a pair of fisted hands, we get the repulsor blast hands, then we also get these super articulated hands right here which are really cool because you could bend them right there at the thumb and then they bend midway through at the thumb and then you get joints right there at the knuckles and then it bends twice on each finger which is really cool. Then there's also batteries that come with this which I'll show in a second and then you get three different options for the thigh area too. Now this is the main helmet sculpt that we get with this figure. You can see he doesn't have any battle damage or anything like that and I think this is a good sculpt. So they did remake the Mark 7 helmet sculpt for the Tony Stark test suit figure uh, where, where he comes with all the Mark 42 pieces and all that so he did come with an extra Mark 7 head which I'll swap out in a minute but I just wanted to show this one really quick and then what you can do is you can lift up the face plate right here and I believe when you first get this it does come with the batteries already in Side, just flip the switch down right there. You can see on the inside of the faceplate we get a lot of nice detail, so that's looking really good. And we get some magnets that hold this together in place and just get that shifted on there and that looks really, really nice. Very, very bright. I like that a lot. And then we can just swap this out for the battle damaged one and just put this right in here. And that looks really cool too. I really love this battle damage that we get over here. That is just awesome. Just on the edges, you see that nice silver paint. Looks really, really dope, and I love that stained black that you get right here on the top of the head and everything. That looks really cool. And then to attach the Mark 42 Test Suit Mark 7 head sculpt, we just put that right on there, and it pegs in really nicely. And you can see it is slightly different. And when you do a side-by-side -side comparison between these two, you can see the differences. So this is definitely the wider helmet sculpt. This one's a lot more narrow. A little bit of black right there underneath around the eye section. I don't know. I think I like the original one a bit more though, right? I don't know. They're both pretty cool. And then to swap in the Tony Stark head sculpt, we've got to remove this from the neck over here. So you want to pop that off. And then he does come with that collar piece. You want to make sure that little lip is facing upwards. Then grab the Robert Downey Jr. head and pop it on there, come on! Now I'd seen this head sculpt many times in a lot of pictures and many reviews and stuff and it's always looked a little bit off and weird to me, but now that I have it in person it looks equally as weird. I just don't think it looks dead on Robert Downey Jr. I just think it's a little bit off. I still think it has some really nice sculpt work and paint on it though. I will say this flesh tone looks really nice. You can even see some little wrinkles right there around the eyes. The beard and the mustache looks good. 
So, I mean, it's well done as far as the quality. I just don't think they nailed the likeness more than anything else. But the hair looks really nice on this. Nicely sculpted. Some nice browns and blacks mixed in there. Looking really good. Looking very natural. So, I don't think they did a terrible job on this. I just think it could look a little bit more like Robert Downey Jr. Alright, we got the battle damage head back on there. Now, looking at these shoulder pieces, this is display option number one. And you can remove these little panels over here. I don't particularly like this look because I feel like it makes the shoulders look very small. I don't know. And you just peel these off like so. So for the right side I put this shoulder piece on and then we have this alternate one right over here. Ooh, tiny tiny pink chip right there already. Damn it. Anyway looking at these they both look really good. I like how you have these little deployed missiles right here. These little pods right here are detailed out very nicely. And then coming around the back you lift this up right there and you could lift that up and you can see right underneath we get a little bit of detail looking really nice. Same thing on this side over here. And then he has these flaps that lift up right over here too. And I think these are his stabilizers as opposed to being air brakes. Because you get these little jet thingies right here. And that's the reason why I like this armor so much. Because I was always irritated with Iron Man having to use his hands to stabilize. So having these right here in the back so he can fly around and then have his hands free to shoot repulsors I think is awesome. And then you do have this button that you could switch down. Then we could come around back to the front. And then you could see his arc reactor gleaming. Looking really, really nice. That is very bright. And then you can remove this right over here, and you can see all the details right there on the chest section. That looks really cool. And you can remove these side pieces right there, so you get this option going. Get that off, and I really like the little details that we get right there. That looks awesome. Very, very nice look. And then you get this third option where you can attach the battle damage, and that battle damage is awesome. I like to add those two flaps on the sides again, though. A little bit more complete having these on here, and that looks really sick. I love the silver and black right there. That is cool. Some nicks and gashes. I really dig that. And then we have this arm section. So this is just the regular display option you have right here. So you can see it has some paint wear and everything on it, which is intentional. And then on this right side, you can get this little missile deployed, which I think looks really, really cool. And you can do the same thing on the left arm, as you saw in the beginning of the video. You could have missiles shooting out on both sides. And then you get interchangeable arms, too. I'm just going to demonstrate this on the left side. And all these interchangeable pieces have directions as far as which way you can turn them and everything. Oh, Oh yeah, and then there's the light-up function right here on the hands too, so that works out really nicely. But this arm does not have the light-up function, this is just a battle damaged look. You just plug that right back in there, and you can see this battle damaged arm looking incredible. Love the detail on this. And then you get this little piece right over here which looks really cool. This little piece right here is not removable, so you cannot have the missile thing and this going on at the same time. But down here, the ab section looks really nice on the figure. And then these thighs, man. So on the left thigh, I just have the gold battle damaged piece right here. And you can see it's just a much more sleeker look. I like how that looks though, I think that's pretty cool. And then this is the more regular version right there. And then you can pop this off and as you saw earlier, you can have the little missiles sticking out of it. And this just plugs into those two ports right there. You can see it has a lot of wear on it around here. Nice silver paint, nice black fading. These look really, really cool. So I love that you can do that on both of these legs. And then coming down here at the bottom, you can see that you can lift this piece out over here on this side and on this side so you get some brakes going. Then you can lift this piece up and you get some wires and everything and that looks great. Great details on this. So you can do the same thing on this side as well. I guess my biggest gripe about this figure is I feel like his calves right here are a little too skinny or his ankles. It feels like he has super skinny ankles and I don't remember them looking that skinny in the movie, but still, I mean, it's really not a big deal compared to everything else I like about it. I just love this little attention to detail with these all these little nicks and stuff like that. He does have treads at the bottom. Then here's a last look at the back of the figure. I love how the joints have those silver pieces in there. So one thing that was always a pet peeve of mine about this figure is I've seen some people have this displayed where the shoulders are really slouched downward because you get that crazy shoulder articulation with this guy. So that frustrates me. I really like that now that I have my own. I can set it up so that his shoulders are all nice and high and he looks all bulky and everything. So anyway, you can get the head tilting up very far upwards and I absolutely love that. That is super cool. You can get him in some cool flying poses, get him looking downwards quite a bit. You get side to side movement over here and he does have neck pivot. His shoulders can shift up and down as I already explained and they shift in and out. You get these spring loaded shoulder pads on both sets of arms. So you can move the arms outward quite a bit. You can move them outward that much and you can rotate them forward. You get a bicep swivel, you do get a joint at the elbow so it bends in that much and then you get wrist swivel and it can move it all the way around it's on a ball joint uh, you have this cool thing where you want to detach the torso section so it shifts up like that 
and then you get this movement right here where it can move side to side, which you could actually do before you shift this up. So that's the diaphragm joint that's moving side to side, and you do get pivot over here at the diaphragm joint, and this waist joint's moving too. And then you get some good crunching movement over here, and it can bend backwards some, not a whole ton, but a little bit. And then you also get some waist movement over here too. I could shift this waist side to side, and it does pivot a little bit right there at the waist too. So it doesn't really move too much, but you get some movement. You get the hip joints that move outward, not as much as I'd like them to, but you get that kind of movement with those. You can, whoop, this came off. You get the legs that shift upwards that much. I like how you get this rubberized material for this hip guard section, so you can move those forward that much, can move back some. You get the upper thigh rotation. Now you do get some nice bending right there at the knee. Then the ankles cannot really move down as much as I'd like them to. Eh, they do move up a little bit though, and you get these shifting panel pieces right here. You get two of those moving around in the front, one moving right here in the back, and then you get toe articulation. It only bends a little bit, and you do get some ankle pivot, but it's very, very subtle. So now that we got old Shellhead back to his non-battle damaged mode, you can see that he's standing just a little under 13 inches tall. And then here's Mark 7 Iron Man next to the Tony Stark figure, and then we have the re painted stealth version of the Mark 7 right there, and then here's the die-cast Mark 43 Iron Man. Kind of funny that he's actually shorter than the Mark 7. Then to compare Mark 7 to some other Mark 7s, we have the NECA 1 4th scale Mark 7 way up there, we have the Figma 6 inch scale, and then we have the Hasbro 3 3 quarter inch one. And then adding Mark 7 over here to my Avengers display, I really, really dig this. I think he fits into good scale with these other figures. I'm very, very happy. And then here's Mark 7 next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. You know, after all this time, I still have not tried one shawarma. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, leg rocket? Ah! Oh! So as much as I don't like the adjustable cradle, I can get this Iron Man figure in a flight pose without touching the ground or the base right there. So hey, that actually works, even though I still much prefer the dynamic pose stand. And this is a great figure. I do have my little problems with it. There are some imperfections. I definitely wish it had better ankle pivot. But aside from those little things, man, I really, really like this figure a lot. I'm very, very happy with it. And I'm very, very grateful to Javon. Thank you so much, man. And I hope you guys Guys liked my review if you did please hit the like button click any of these boxes over here if you want more shirt in your face if you're 18 years older please check out the patreon account follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and also go to marvelousnews.com for the latest in marvel related news i'll catch you guys later peace Wow, Spidey sense.